Alright guys, we're going to do our notes for our classification of neurons and reflex arc. So if you can see up in the top right corner, I have put three different colors and so you'll need three colors for your notes as well. And we're going to start out with the classification of neurons and how they get different shapes and where those different shaped neurons are going to be found. First thing we're going to do is look at a multipolar neuron, and a multipolar neuron gets its name because it has more than one pole coming out of it. And so we'll come in first and draw our cell body, and that cell body um, typically has a little bit of a star-like shape like this, okay? And it'll have a nucleus within that cell body, and there will be dendrites that lead into that cell body which are gonna be on the receiving end of the cell body. And one long axon that extends out from that multipolar um, cell body or that multipolar neuron. And then that axon can branch and become axon terminals. Okay, these multipolar neurons have one axon, many dendrites, and they will be found within the uh, central nervous system, which is made up of your brain and your spinal cord. Bipolar neurons have one axon and one dendrite. So we always start with our cell body, and that cell body will have two poles coming out of it, which is why you get the name bipolar. And so here's our cell body, and we have our nucleus in the center. We have one dendrite on the receiving end of that cell body and one axon coming out of that. Bipolar neurons are your rarest neurons and they're only found within your nose and your ears, um, picking up the sensation of smell and hearing. Unipolar neurons have a cell body that has almost a stalk coming off of it. You can see here, if we draw a cell body, we just want one pole coming off of that cell body. We still have a nucleus. All the other organelles would be found within that cell body, but the dendrite will come off of the stalk, and so will the axon, so that when you look at that cell body, the, um, there's only one, one extension coming off of that. These are all of your sensory neurons are mostly unipolar in shape. And these cell bodies like to organize themselves together into a group of cell bodies called ganglia. And because of that, your spinal cord has a different appearance on the back side from the front side. So ganglia here is a cluster of neuron cell bodies, which would be where a whole bunch of these unipolar cell bodies would organize themselves together. Okay, if we look at the functional classification of neurons, we can organize them into three types. We have sensory neurons, interneurons, and motor neurons. And sensory neurons are gonna carry information from a receptor to the central nervous system. So if you get the sensation that something is hot or cold or someone taps you on the shoulder, that message is sent from a receptor to the central nervous system, which is either your brain or spinal cord, by way of an afferent neuron or a sensory neuron. Those words are interchangeable. Once the uh, message is inside of the central nervous system, it'll travel through the middleman. And the middleman is called the interneuron, sometimes called the association neuron. And it will link a sensory neuron to a motor neuron. And that interneuron lies completely within the brain or the spinal cord. After the message is transmitted through the interneuron, it will travel to the motor neuron, which is efferent. E starts, efferent starts with an E and so does exit. So efferent neurons are gonna exit the brain or spinal cord and carry a message to an effector. And the only two effectors in the body are muscles and glands. So I'll just add this in here that the two effectors within the body are muscles and glands. For example, if you were to sense something hot, then the message would get transmitted from a sensory neuron 
to an interneuron to a motor neuron, and that motor neuron would go tell a muscle in your hand, hey, pull that, or pull your arm away because that was hot. And so it would tell a muscle within your hand. Let's say you run outside, it's super hot in the middle of the summer, the motor neuron or the efferent neuron can go tell a gland to sweat in order to bring your body temperature back down or to cool you off. A reflex arc is the simplest nerve pathway. And we're gonna really simplify how this process happens. If you look at this picture here, a stimulus would, the stimulus would be the tack. You would touch the tack with your finger. You would send the message through the afferent or sensory nerve uh, fiber or sensory neuron to the central nervous system. Once it gets inside of the central nervous system, it will travel through the interneuron and then to the efferent neuron, which will carry it to the effector, which would be a muscle in your finger that says, pull your finger away from the tack, that was sharp. Okay, so the simplest nerve pathway is a sensory nerve fiber, an interneuron, and then a motor neuron. Okay, reflex behavior is going to be described by an unconscious response to a stimulus that can be within or outside the body. The tack would be a stimulus outside the body. You could also have a stimulus internally, like a change in blood sugar, um, or you need to release certain digestive enzymes. That's going to be you know, something that is controlled autonomically and may not be as obvious. Some examples would be the control um, of your heart rate, your breathing rate, blood pressure, and digestion. Also swallowing, sneezing, coughing, and vomiting. And the one that we'll look at um, is like a knee jerk reflex where someone taps the uh, ligament and tendon near your knee, then your foot is gonna kick out. And that's still a simple reflex arc, uh, the simplest nerve pathway that we described on the last slide. Here's a picture of how that looks um, and a little bit more detail about how does that, uh, how those neurons look within the spinal cord. So this big structure that you see right here is your spinal cord. Um, it's much, much smaller in your body, but uh, it's zoomed in so that you can see all of the, the neurons within it. Dorsal means that this is the back of your spinal cord and ventral means that this is the front or belly side of your spinal cord. Um, it is made up of white matter and gray matter. That white matter is myelinated and gray matter is unmyelinated. Okay, let's look at it from um, the, the reflex arc first. This is a pen, okay, the pen touches your skin and you sense that is sharp. A receptor is going to pick up that message. It is gonna send that message through a sensory neuron, and that sensory neuron is going to make a connection with an interneuron. The interneuron lies completely within the central nervous system. Okay, go back to the notes we did on the first day and say, well, what's in the central nervous system? The brain and the spinal cord. That makes sense. If an interneuron lies within the central nervous system, then it's gonna be within the brain or spinal cord, and we're looking at the spinal cord here. The interneuron will make a connection with the motor neuron that's gonna produce some kind of movement. And here we go, traveling down the motor neuron until you reach an effector. In this example, the effector is a muscle. When you look at the spinal cord, it is rounded, but it has two branches that come off of it. Those branches are gonna be named based on what side of the spinal cord they're on. If it's on the ventral side, it's called the ventral root. If it's on the dorsal side or the back side, it's called the ventral root. The dorsal root and the ventral root will come together and form a spinal nerve. The spinal nerves are all of the nerves that branch off of your spinal cord and travel to different areas of your body. 
A nerve is not a neuron. A nerve is a collection or group of neurons, specifically the axons, that come together to form what we think of as a nerve. All right, remember, you've got billions and billions of neurons that make up both nerves and the brain and the spinal cord. Okay, that looks like that's the end. Um, if you need to rewind, go back and make sure you understand the functional classifications of neurons, the structural classifications of neurons, and then this very simplistic view of a reflex arc um, within the spinal cord.